Our scripture for today will be taken from the book of Hosea, chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. Hosea, chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. While you're turning, I want to say thank you to our praise team this morning. Getting us moving in the right direction with worship. Thank you to our youth choir. Lifting up their voices and leading us in worship this morning. Amen? Amen. Hosea chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. Will you now rest on your feet for the reading of God's word? From the New King James Version of the Bible, the word of God reads. Bring charges against your mother, bring charges, for she is not my wife, nor am I her husband. Let her put away her harlotries from her sight, and her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and expose her, as in the day she was born, and make her like a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth that is found in your word. We pray, Father, that as we spend this time together, that you will speak to our hearts. Teach us about love. Teach us about relationships. Teach us about you. We pray, Father, that our marriages and relationships will be strong because of the time that we spend together this morning. As always, Father, I ask very humbly that you would allow your spirit to work for me for your glory. That this body of Christ will be edified and you, Holy Father, will be glorified. Love on us today, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. And we thank you, ushers, this morning for your service. Today we're going to continue with our look at the prophet Hosea and our sermon series, Love Never Fails. So far in this series, we have learned that love really does not fail because, well, God is love and God never fails. So love never fails. Uh, Hosea is a minor prophet to the kingdom of Israel, and his life is being used as a metaphor uh, for the relationship between God and his people. And Hosea is instructed to go and take a wife. And last week we talked about that in chapter 1, that if you're going to start on a relationship journey, if you're looking to get married, the first place you need to start with is the Lord. Amen. It is the Lord who created marriage. It is the Lord who sanctified marriage. And you should be listening for God to give you direction on the relationship that you're entering into. And remember that marriage is not perfect because marriage includes two imperfect people. Did you hear that? Marriage includes two imperfect people. As much as you might want to fix your spouse, as much as you might want to get the other person to do what you want them to do, marriage is made up of two imperfect people, but thanks be to God, it is also a covenant between those two people and one perfect God. So we can trust God and learn um, from, from the example that Hosea gives us. Marriage starts with God. Tell your neighbor that marriage is a God thing. It's not something we come up with on our own. Marriage is a God thing. It is something that uh, comes from Him, and it's something that we need to remember and honor Him. Well, uh, last week we just talked about marriage in general, but today um, there's some trouble. There's some trouble that Hosea um, is, is, is experiencing, and there's some trouble that God is experiencing. And today, though love never fails, there's still going to be some trials. So let's talk a little bit about it this morning. Let's look back at verse 2. Hosea chapter 2, verse 2. And the first thing I want to talk to you about is falling out of love. Falling out of love. He says, bring charges against your mother, bring charges, for she is not my wife, nor am I her husband. Something is wrong in paradise. Things are not going the way that they thought it would go. 
Uh, and, and for those of you who are newlyweds, those of you who are looking to get married, um, it does not have a fairy tale ending. Um, you can get halfway out of the church and there are problems. You can, you can be frustrated when the wedding is over and you're trying to take pictures, you know, because you want to get out of the tuxedo and the other one want to get out of the dress and be tired of them telling you to pose this way and, and take a picture with this one and that one and you get frustrated and things don't quite work out perfectly. Sometimes in a marriage relationship, there's going to be some neglect. We're not always going to get everything that we want. There's going to be some hurt. There's going to be some betrayal. There's going to be uh, the, the meshing of different attitudes and, and different ideas. I know for my wife and I, when, when we married, you're talking about a, a, a pure city boy from Birmingham and, and a girl who grew up in a small town in Lynette. We, we just had two different worlds. And when they collided, buddy, woo -woo, there were fragments everywhere. But thanks be to God, we made it, and uh, we're still making it every day. It's still not perfect, but but just know that there are going to be some times in your relationship that there are going to be problems, and you're going to have to learn how to work through those problems. And this is why, watch this. This is why the covenant of marriage uh -huh. is vitally important. Not, not, not just the fact that you got married, not just the fact that you, you, know, you love the other person or you know that the other person loves you, but during the hard times, it takes something a little bit stronger to hold your marriage together. And if you can at least have a covenant that you respect, then you can keep striving together for a happy household. Probably some of us have cheapened the covenant. We've been cheapened it. Um, so let me, let me give you an example. We all know what this is. Uh -huh. That's money. There's a one dollar bill, and there's a hundred dollar bill. And everybody's got that. I know all of you got your attention focused on the one hundred dollar bill. I, I know this. I know this. But both of them have a, a saying on them. Both of them say on the bills, uh, let me see if I can show you, show you where. Hey, Amen. Whoa, not that one. Oh, not that one either. I'm going to go back. But I won't be pressing on that. But on both of the bills, you have written on them that this note, did you hear that? You can take out your Bible and look at it. This note is legal tender for all debts, um, public and private. A dollar is a note. It is a treasury note. A $100 bill is a note. It's a treasury note. It's kind of like a promissory note. You know, when you go get a loan, especially like a student loan, and they make you sign that promise to pay it back, this is a promise by the government that this, this note is good to be used for the purchase of goods or to handle any debts or anything like that. And, and you know what I found out about $1 bills and $100 bills? One dollar bills and hundred dollar bills are both backed by the same treasury. Both have the same message uh, on the on the bills, but we pay a lot more attention to the hundred dollar bill than the one dollar bill. <laughs> you know how it is. You go to the store. And you sometimes you found one dollar bills just laying lying in the parking lot. Right. People just you know they, they don't care about one hundred uh, one dollar bill. They get washed in the laundry. And, and all that kind of stuff. And then they say, change it. But when you go to buy something with a hundred dollar bill, what's the first thing they do? <laughs> they go looking for wait hold on hold on and get that marker out and start writing on it and, and I gotta see is this real is it a real because a hundred listen that hundred dollar bill is a lot more serious than that one dollar bill yeah. hmm. some of us view marriage and relationships like a one dollar bill we really don't put a lot of stock into it. We can fall in love and fall out of love, and we can get married this week, get divorced next month, and, and, and you know, we, we, it's, it's, it's cheap. It, it doesn't have value. But, but, but here's the problem. The problem is a lot of us want a hundred dollar marriage. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. We want the time that you got to verify and it, it holds some substance and it's, it's special and you got to make sure it's real. Oh, he got to love me. He got, ooh, he got to love me. 
and she has to be my boo, and we we go through all of this. We want a hundred dollar marriage, but we got a one dollar attitude. We want a hundred dollar marriage, but 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 we got a one dollar commitment. And as soon as something doesn't go right, oh yeah, we got. This just got to come to an end. This, we, we, we can't do this anymore. We can't, we can't stay together. Yeah. Because it didn't go the way I wanted it to go. You didn't do what I wanted you to do. Guess what? Folks fall in and out of love all the time. Yeah. All right. And you need a covenant yes, sir. that you respect. Like you respect the $100 bill. Yeah. Right. Respect the covenant of marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Even if just one of you, listen, even if just one of you respects the covenant, at least have one person in the relationship that's fighting to keep it alive. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's, that's, that's falling out of love. But, but you know what? Because Hosea right here is writing, and he's writing from the perspective of God saying this about his people. God is the same way. God wants the, the, the serious commitment and covenant from us. He doesn't want us to be the kind of people that at any will, if he doesn't do what we want him to do, that we just walk out on God. Or that we just decide we, we want to try something else. He wants us to stay committed whether we get what we want or not. God wants us to be in a relationship with him that, that we put the full effort into because he's done nothing less for us. And some of us, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't squirm in your seat, but some of you have fallen out of love with God. And I'm going to leave that right there. Amen? Second thing I want to talk to you about is a fabricated love. So let's drop down to verses 4 and 5. Hosea chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. It says, I will not have mercy on her children, for they are the children of harlotry, for their mother has played the heart. She who conceived them has behaved shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers, who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. So let me ask a question for those of you, and don't you answer this out loud, and listen, let me just put this out there too. Ladies, don't, because I know some of our ladies are going to do it. Don't you ask the guy to answer this question when y'all get in the car after church. Because <laughs> <laughs> we just might not know that. <laughs> so the question is, why did you decide to date the person you That's a dangerous question. I'm sorry. <laughs> why, why, if you're thinking about getting married, why are you getting married? Why are you doing it? And if you are already married, why did you get married? Uh -huh. And I know some of y'all have already said that you got mad, and why did I even marry you? I know you already done it. But I want you to seriously consider why did you date this person? Why did you think about getting married? And why did you get married? Yeah. Because your why is going to affect your what. And if your why is not right, then your what and your how, how you do things, is going to be twisted. Oh, yeah. Okay? Let's, 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 let's look at something here. I want to challenge you to make a list. I want to challenge you to make a list and write down what you love about the other person that you're with. Okay? And listen, let me put this out there too. Don't ask them to turn the list in to you. <laughs> but make a list. What do you like about this person? What do you love about this person? And then I want you to have to make that list. This is homework. You heard me? homework. After you make that list, you need to answer the question. If they lost, or if they stopped doing or being the things that are on your list, would you still love them? Mm -hmm. 
you know, I love, I love her because this, that, and the other. But what if she can't? What if she doesn't do that anymore? What if she is not that person anymore? And the reason why I'm asking that is because uh, love changes over time. And people change over time. I'm not the same person that my wife married. You know, in, in May, God, God willing the creek don't rise, in May, we will be married 20 years. I am not the same person that I was 20 years ago. In fact, in some ways, it's probably worse. But, but the truth is, I'm different. And she has to today love the me that's here today. Yes. My, my, my suit size has changed. I don't look the same. I got this gray stuff popping out in various, I mean, I keep thinking it's lint in my hair, but it's not. And I've become picky all of a sudden. And, you know, particular about things. And, but she still got to love me, the me that's here today. Okay, and now here's the second part of the homework assignment. That was number one. Here's the second part. Make a list. Make a list of the things that you don't like about your significant other, your, your, your spouse, your fiance, your girlfriend. Make a list. Make a list of the things you don't like. And and some of you are going to realize some of the things you don't like are really superficial. I'm going to tell you that up front. You're going to realize the fact that you don't like the way, you know, he puts his food on his plate and he let the food touch. Because some of y'all don't like your food to touch. I know that. You're going to realize that's superficial. All right? So you, you write it down, but just know you got to reconcile with that. But make a list of the things you don't like. And when you're done, answer the question, if the person never changed, would you still love them? Would you still love them if it never changed? If, if, if she likes her toast crispy and she always makes yours crispy, but you like your toast light, would you still love her if she don't make the toast the way you want the toast made? If he, if you don't like the way that he loads the dishwasher, and then, or either they just don't help with the dishes at all, and then, and then he still don't, 10 years from now, would you still love him, or would you leave because the dishes haven't been washed by him? I mean, think about it. Those little quirks, those things that we say we don't like, sometimes those are the things that drive us away. And let me tell you what you're going to find at the end of these two lists. At the end of these two lists, you're going to find out whether or not the love you say you have is authentic. Uh -huh. You're going to find out whether the love you say you have is unconditional. Because that's the kind of love God has for us, and that's the kind of love we should display in a marriage relationship. It's love without strings attached. It's love without if and then clauses. I will love you if you do this, then I will do something else. It is a love that doesn't look for any of that. I'll love you if you're always late. I'll love you if I have to wait for you to get dressed. I'll love you if you leave your socks in the floor. I'll love you if you still drive too fast. I'll love you all kinds of things that other folks will be upset about because my love is not for the things. My love is for you. Look at what the woman says in the verse that we read. The woman says, uh, she said, uh, I'll go after my lovers who give me my bread, who give me my water, my wool, my linen, my oil, and my drink. Some of us, what we do is we are in love Person, we're in love with the provision. We're not, we're, we're not in love with the person. We're in love with the benefits. And what's happening here is this woman is saying, you know what? I, 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 I've used you up. Wait, hold on. Let's take the gloves off. Let's take the gloves off. Let's put them down. Some of us know it. Especially, y'all who say it, don't you agree with this? I'm just gonna say it. But us married folk know. When we were saying we were all about the business of using up anybody we could hit. Oh, you know, you pick that girl and, and it's nice and y'all look real good together and y'all a power couple because you know I was 
voted this in my class, and she was voted that, and we together, and we somebody special. And, but then when that wears off, then I gotta break up with you, I gotta find somebody else who maybe looks better, or maybe drives a different car, or, you know, we, we do that kind of stuff. We, we, we use a person up, get all the benefits we can out of them. You know, after they give us the heart-shaped box of chocolates, they give us the oversized teddy bear, once we got that, then we can break up on the 15th. <laughs> They got the benefit of they look a certain way. They got the benefit that they, they have a certain job. But what if he or she loses the job? All right. All right. All right. Does the love grow cold because the money stopped flowing? I mean, I just want to be real with you today. What if you've been married now for 10 years and then all of a sudden, think about this, men and women, think about it. You've been married for a long time, but then all of a sudden the gifts stop coming. You know, he used to go out of his way for Valentine's Day. Now, all I get is a text message. <laughs> what, what, what you gonna do then? Are you going to go chase after your lovers who will give you the things that you want? Oh, wait, hold on, stop. Let me clarify something here, because we just talking this morning, amen? amen? Some of us will go after our lovers, and our lovers won't be another man, and our lovers won't be another woman. Our lovers might just be our cousin them who decide to do something we really want to do, and what we decide since our man we're going to do what, he, what we wanted him to do, then we're going to go and chase after them because we'll know we'll get what we want. Because some of us got sisters and cousins that get together and have a good time and he won't take me on a cruise but I'll go on a cruise with him. She won't give me what I want so I'm going to go somewhere where I can have some stimulating conversation with some other woman or maybe I'm going to go hang out with the fellas. I'm going to go and get my wool, my flax, my attention, whatever they need, whatever I need from whoever's getting it. Your lovers don't. Some of us, listen, I'm going to say it. Some of y'all are cheating on your spouse with pook in them. <laughs> because, you know, it's All-Star Weekend or it's Super Bowl Weekend. And you're cheating on your wife with pook in them. Okay? All right? So, so just know, you can't fabricate real love. Because let me ask a question. What if God, what if God allows you to go through a lean season in your life where you didn't get everything you wanted? What would you do? Some of us chase after our lovers. We go running after the government. We go running after our job. We go running away from somebody to give us another check. We go running to the astrologer. We go running to our daily horoscope. We go running. God is the one who answers prayer, but we don't go to the horoscope to see what somebody can tell us about the stars that God created. I mean, God created the stars and put them in that position. But we want to go and ask somebody else what our daily horoscope say because hopefully it will tell us something that somehow we think God won't tell us. Yeah. And we go to the root worker, and we go to our friend who's Muslim, and we go to this other person because we just need something spiritual. Yeah. Whatever it is. And I ain't gonna start with running to the casinos and all that stuff. Point three. <laughs> Point three. I forgot love. Go down to verse 13, Hosea 2 and 13. Hosea chapter 2, verse 13. This is the Lord speaking. He says, I will punish her for the days of the Baals, 
to which she burned incense. She decked herself with her earrings and jewelry and went after her lovers. But me? She forgot. Says the Lord. Israel, during the time of Hosea, Israel had forgotten about God. They had forgotten all the things that God had done for them. They had forgotten that it was he who made the sun rise. They had forgotten that their crops grew because God sent the rain and the land. They forgot all about the Red Sea. They forgot about being in slavery. They forgot about wandering in the wilderness. They forgot about God giving them a land as an inheritance. They didn't have to uh, uh, purchase that. He just gave them the promised land. They forgot about him blessing them with children because it is God who opens up the matrix according to the Bible and allows children to be born. They had forgotten everything about God and had started chasing after foreign gods. They were committing idolatry, and God likens that to a person who has walked out on their spouse, and he says, she forgot about it. After all that he has done, Israel had forgotten.